So far in the majority of our blog videos, we've been looking at the Mastercam software. And in this video, I wanna try something a little bit different. And with that, I'm gonna be in the G coding world. And I wanna have a look at some macro programming. So macro programming is a very powerful function uh, in the programming world, especially in G code. There's uh, a lot of different things you can do from the simple all the way to the extremely complex. And in this video, I just wanna show a few basic um, uh, things you can do with macros just to kind of open some eyes and maybe open the door into the world of macro B programming. So what I've got up on screen here right now, uh, I'm working in Simcoe Edit. Uh, Simcoe Edit uh, is a G-code backplotting software uh, amongst other things. Um, and it's able to, to um, simulate not only G-code but the macro programming in your G-codes. So that's what I'm using for this video. Uh, what I've got here is I've got a, uh, a very basic program, uh, calls up a tool, tool number one, rapids to x0, y0, spindle speed call there, basically drops down to one inch, uh, negative one inch, and moves around a block that is six inches in x, four inches in y, uh, and then returns back to home. So very, very basic program, um, not a very realistic program, you wouldn't cut apart like this, but um, this is just what we're going to work with as we go through our macro programming here. So first thing up with this part, uh, the most obvious is this part has length and it has width. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, is drop in the variables for the length and width of this part. So I'm going to use variable number one. So I can just type in number one, that's the variable. I'm going to say equals six inches. And in brackets, we can always comment in our G code with brackets and the controls won't read it. I'm uh, just going to make a note to myself that this variable is storing, in fact, the length value. So for number two, same thing. I'm going to store a value in here of four inches. And I'm going to call this one my width. So with two variables defined, number one and number two, and I've got values in them of six inches and four inches, I can come down into my program and substitute in uh, those variables for these numbers. So instead of x six inches, I'm going to say x number one. And instead of y four inches, I'm going to say y number two. So at first glance, nothing is different in this program. Everything looks the same until I come up and actually alter these values. So instead of six inches for the length, I'm going to change it to eight. So you can see my toolpath has, uh, has grown in x. And for y, let's reduce this one to two inches. So again, you can see the program has in fact adjusted its uh, dimension in Y. So pretty straightforward so far. And you might even still say, why would you do this? There's nothing really gained as to inputting eight and two at the top versus inputting um, a number one and two down here. So um, this is just showing the capability, but again, it's not overly practical just yet. So let's have a look at something a little more involved. So let's say this corner down here is going to have a rat in it. So that's going to happen after uh, this movement here to X and that movement to Y. So in between here, we're going to insert a piece of code to make a radius in here. Uh, so obviously that's going to be a G03 command. It's going to have an X value. It's going to have an I, a Y value and it's going to have an R value. So right now I'm not sure what those values are going to be because I'm not sure how big of an arc I want to create. So let's go up here and make a variable number three. And let's input uh, a placeholder value for our arc of a half of an inch. And let's just call this our radius. Okay, so G03. Uh, uh, this first line here, X uh, to eight inches. Um, obviously to make an arc, we're not gonna wanna travel all the way to eight inches. We're gonna wanna stop short of eight inches by the size of our radius for this. So in this previous line, I'm going to do x number one, but I want to stop shorter than that by the amount of the radius we want to apply here by number three. Okay, and with macro programming, anytime you're doing a, an equation or something, you basically need to encase it in square brackets. So it looks fancy, but basically all I'm doing is, is saying that x equals whatever this equation inside of this bracket works out to be. So I'm telling it to go to X, in this case, eight inches minus our half inch radius. So when we do our, our arcing move, our radius movement, 
X is going to end up at uh, what we originally were wanting to go to, which is our 8 inches, number 1. Our Y value, we're currently at 0, so when we arc up in Y, we're moving up by the amount of, or the size of, our radius. And obviously the R value for this code is going to be, in fact, the same as our radius. So, again, we'll just put in number 3. And lastly, since we are in a G3 here, we need to switch back to a G01, since G03 is modal. And there's our arcing command. So arcing command is all variables, one, two, three locations. And then with our variable at the top, we can easily change this variable to be much smaller. This is a very small rad down here. Or we can make it much, much bigger, one inch. So that is starting to show some of the power now of macros. Um, we're adjusting quite a few features or aspects about this part just with a few uh, inputs at the top of this program. So take things uh, just one final step further. And that's again going to keep in line with these um, equations. and. Let's just throw another variable in here, number four. And I'm going to put in quarter inch for now. And I'm going to say that this is going to be my uh, cutter diameter. So we're going to assume that tool number one is going to have the cutter in here no matter what. And let's just assume it's an end mill. And so based on this cutter that we're using, we want to be able to specify a certain RPM. And we want to be able to specify a certain feed rate. So what we can do for that is instead of S5000, we're going to input uh, an open bracket because we're going to do a, a calculation here. And we're going to uh, do our, our normal speeds and feeds calculation. So the surface or our RPM calculation is surface feed, uh, surface footage per minute times 3.82 divided by diameter of cutter. So we're going to assume we're going to go at 600 surface feet per minute times 3.82 divided by whatever the diameter of our cutter is, which is number four. Okay, so basically we can alter the diameter of our cutter up here and get a different RPM output in this program. So same thing for our feed rate. So I want to base my feed rate off of the cutter diameter that I have here as well. So feed rate, let's get that square bracket, feed rate is going to be the same RPM calculation Because basically feed rate is going to be RPM times number of flutes times the desired chip load. Uh, so we're going to go that same calculation here to get our RPM. Then we'll multiply that by number of flutes. We'll say 4. And multiply that by our chip load. Let's go with 1 thou. Close that bracket. Okay. So I've got a formula in here for RPM and a formula in here for feed rate. Now let's see if this is actually working. So we can't monitor the spindle speed uh, in Simcoe, um, but there's other programs that you can. So we're just going to assume that this is calculating out correctly. Um, I'll show again in a, in a minute here how we can uh, be sure of that. But as we cursor down here, you can see this first move in Z is a, a feed rate of 100 inches per minute. It's finished that move. Down here we can see the feed rate, 100 inches per minute. So when I cursor down to this next line, I should see this newly calculated feed rate based on the formula I've input. And it's telling me 36.672 inches per minute based on this. But how do we know that this is getting executed correctly? Let's just open up our Windows calculator. And we said the formula was uh, 600 SFM times 3.82 divided by cutter diameter, which is number four, which is quarter inch. So divided by quarter inch equals. So those are RPM, basically 9,168 RPM. And we're multiplying that by four flutes. So times four and times a 1,000 chip load times 0 0.001 should be giving us a feed rate of 36.672 inches per minute, which is what we're getting down here. So. We are assuming a few things here. We're, we're giving it an SFM. We're giving it a number of flutes. We're giving it chip load. So these, again, these could all be, uh, this SFM could be a variable. Number of flutes could be a variable. Chip load, again, could be a variable. 
and all these calculations would be performed. So we've gone from the very basics of just inputting X and Y to make a different size box, and then we've stepped it up into um, including an arcing movement in there that's doing all sorts of different positionings from variables. And then lastly, we're doing a few little uh, calculations based off of one input value to accomplish uh, or to output different RPMs and feed rates. So again, a very, a very um, basic introduction into macro programming. Things can get obviously a lot more complicated. Um, and there's many, many, many uses for macro programming. If this is something you would be interested in seeing more of, uh, please drop us a line, let us know, send us some feedback, and we will look at getting more macro programming videos created.